what is going on YouTube welcome back to the Phoenix channel New Year's Eve approaching 2020 and thugging it out outside actually I was gonna hit the gym this morning it's like five o'clock but the gym's closed today as <laughs> it's New Year's only crazy fucks like me probably want to go work out before work but I think that's weird that you know, it's not necessarily a holiday, and yet it's closed. It's just weird. Phoenix, Arizona is just weird in general. It's just like the the hours of of stuff closing just in a lot of cities here just doesn't make sense. But that's a story for another day. If you like this content, consider hitting that like button. Consider subscribing to this channel, and uh, leave a comment. Shout out to Resi. Shout out to Crypto Fees, the Crypto Type Apologist. And everybody else, Brian Phobos, Zach All, all the homies, thanks for tuning in to this channel. Imagining tech as well. Uh, so with that said, I thought we'd talk about a project I haven't heard a lot about, or I haven't heard uh, other people talking about, and that's the EIDOS project. This is a project that a lot of people affiliate with, allegedly, the CPU congestion that we're seeing on the EOS network. And, you know, for the most part, it is that. I mean... That's a part of its history, um, but it's also important to keep in mind that that congestion that was identified was uh, identified as an issue because of the the EIDOS project. So, you know, on the one hand, a lot of people are looking at it in a negative way, but I always go back to the fact that we wouldn't want to see the CPU congestion issue identified when we're deploying mainstream applications on this network that would be a huge failure um <laughs> it'd be basically like the crypt uh what do you call it the uh i can't think of the the project right now it's gonna come to me but it it'd be our version of that and that would not be very good for for, for eos so in a sense a lot of people are giving this project uh a hard time but what you have to understand is for the network to be successful these scaling tests and issues need to be resolved so I'll just start with that but what EIDOS is if you can think about it is EIDOS token itself is very similar to how the EOS network started with an EOS token uh, an Ethereum, an ERC-20 based token on the Ethereum network called EOS. And that ERC-20 token on the Ethereum network was later converted to a EOS mainnet token. So the EIDOS token is, is actually just like that. It's a holder, it's a holder token for a network and that network is called YAS or Y-A-S network. So the YAS network is allegedly going to have 100 million total YAS tokens to start with, to start the network up. And I think right now, at the time of making this video, there's about 91 million uh, tokens that have been minted. And that mint is created from EIDOS tokens. So as people mine EIDOS, and, and for those that don't know, EIDOS is mined through EOS network resources, CPU, a network resource, I should say, CPU. And the CPU allows users on the EOS network to interact with a contract. And that contract, uh, through the interaction of that contract, allegedly, it will generate for that user an EI EIDOS tokens. So... One of the things, I guess, to, to keep in mind is, again, the EIDOS token is a holder for a couple different things. One option users have is to convert the EIDOS into YAS uh, mainnet tokens, right? Kind of like, again, what the ERC-20 EOS to EOS mainnet tokens was about. For those that were around for that, allegedly, that's kind of how it worked. The EIDOS tokens are the holder for YAS, so you can then take the EIDOS tokens allegedly, interact with this YAS Mint token contract, and get back YAS network tokens. You can do that up to the network's cap, which is 100 million. Now, right now we're at 91 million, which means there's only about 8 million more to go 
in terms of getting a, um, in terms of obtaining the YAS tokens. It's actually a pretty big following here. I think over 20,000 token holders, 20,000 unique token holders. Now, some of those could be duplicates with different accounts, but um, that's pretty interesting. The other thing you should know and why you might want to care about this network allegedly is the YAS network, the founders of it have um, seemed to suggest that they're looking to run the EOS network resource model, the new network resource model um, on the forefront of starting this network. So it could be one of the first networks within EOS, EOS IO to actually test the uh, CPU net resource reimagined model that was proposed by Dan Larimer, which uses um, more of an exponential function in creating basically the cost, right? The, it changes the model from an ownership model, a resource ownership model to a, a rental model, and it transfers the resources to the system contract or the system network as opposed to users. Now we could argue if that's good or bad. Uh, we could look at it in a binary sense. I, I'm trying to shy away from, from binary as much as I can because there's good and bad and everything. But the value here is that it allows the EOS IO ecosystem to actually test this model in more of a um, in, in more of a realistic user setting because a lot of the tests that we've seen thus far have been on the jungle test net, maybe I'm, I'm not sure in other in other test nets, but this will be into the, in the wild, and we'll be able to see um, some of its flaws potentially, some of its issues that it has, and so. I think that'll be very insightful and very valuable, not just to YAS as a network, but to other uh, networks such as EOS. So that's one thing to just be aware of. Um, and the network should be starting here pretty soon. I mean, if it's at 91 million, uh, it probably allegedly won't take more than, a, a, I would say a week or two for likely to, to actually have enough um, to reach its its cap, which is the 100 million mark, and then it starts. Now, initially, this network is going to start with very low resources created, and that's to keep the barriers to create to starting a to starting out as a block producer really low. So, if you guys know anything about EOS, you know that in order to be a block producer, you have to have uh, sufficient machinery to keep up with the performance, um, namely CPU and the storage requirements and the network requirements as well. But in keeping these uh, these requirements fairly low, it removes the barrier to actually starting out as a BP on this network, which is actually a pretty good move. Now, I'm not sure how the performance will be perceived because that comes with a trade-off. If you start to make the the uh, the difficulty of creating a B, becoming a BP fairly low from a machinery or computational standpoint, it does open it up to more potential block producers who hopefully have good intentions for the network. But the disadvantage to it is that the network must then probably be throttled in some ways. So if we reach um, network congestion on this network, you'll probably see a throttling of performance, um, which won't necessarily be perceived very well. Although mainly, it seems like maybe the intent here is to see and, and solicit active users within the community to actually start this thing up. So that's, that's pretty cool. So that was... Uh, a pretty interesting perspective, I think, to have on this project and something to keep in mind. And for those that want some more information, um, check out the EIDOS blog or check out the EIDOS Telegram channel. Um, there's a lot of good uh, discussions in there. There's been some other things pointed out by some of the founders within EIDOS regarding EOS and some of the BP operations and uh, CPU billing, for example, is an interesting one that I could do a whole video about and how this project is uh, potentially, you know, 
identifying some other challenges or other issues within the EOS mainnet, um, namely how we bill for transactions and how do we maintain uniformity between different block producers and in different time domains, right? Because it that could essentially uh, prevent someone's transaction from going through if a BP continues to manipulate the billing of some type of a contract. Um, sounds probably really confusing. I could probably do another video about that. I thought that was really interesting and that shows the value of this project in a sense and its contribution to EOS mainnet because it's identifying all these issues that no one else is talking about. Now you're going to get it on little minority channels like this one, the Phoenix channel. Um, and you know, not to not to, uh, not to toot our own horns, you know, but again, I don't see anybody else talking about that kind of an issue. Everybody's very high on EOS, and that's okay. it's good to be high on EOS, but you also have to, we also have to give people credit for uh, allowing the network to improve and identifying like potential issues down the road. Because if we don't have uniform billing on transactions down the road, that again, um, in terms of decentralization and creating a fair network, I think that's really where value is. It's a trustless, it's it's a network that is should be agnostic to whatever transactions users desire, as long as it doesn't inflict uh, damage or uh, prevent someone else from using the network that is authorized or has the rights to do so based on their ownership of resources, right? So that's big, guys. Um, the other piece of this is in regards to what else you could do with EIDOS tokens. So on the one hand, your first option is create these, um, allegedly, I'm not telling you to do it, so this is not investment advice, but create or obtain the EIDOS network tokens and then convert those to YAS mainnet tokens. That's one option you have. Um, I know some people who are doing that because they're really excited about this network. But for those that aren't excited about the network, potentially, the EIDOS team is also looking at creating a codex, a code dex, which is a, a decentralized exchange. Now, for those OGs out there, you know what a decentralized exchange is. You know, you look at the likes of Ether, Delta, and others, and what a DEX is, is it's a trustless, it's a trustless exchange um, contract that allows users, one user, to trade tokens with another user without an intermediary. So it's very powerful, um, and it's in very high contrast to something like a Coinbase or a, or a Kraken, for example, because there is no central party. You are interacting with your tokens and a smart contract with other users and you're trading those contracts. But this project does a little bit more than that. It's actually a, a liquidity provider. So it allows you to, um, in a nutshell, at a, at a very high level, own a portion of the market. So own a portion of market pairs. So think about EIDOS to EOS, for example, would be an example of that. Or um, YAS to EIDOS. Or it could be other potential pairs that will be added. And each time a trade is done um, by you providing liquidity to the network, there's an actual reward. I mean, it's not a huge reward, but it's a small percentage, maybe 0.2 or 0.002. I don't remember the percentage, but there's a certain percentage that's allocated for every trade. So even though the actual, um, even though the actual percentage isn't high, that percentage applies to every transaction on the network. So if you have high frequency uh, trading high amount of trading, high amount of volume on this network in terms of the amount of trades going on, um, that could be substantial revenue for owners, stakeholders of this decentralized exchange. And so that's 
a project that the EIDOS team has mentioned they have commitments to create and folks who are holders of EIDOS may have the potential to participate in that type of exchange. So anyways, I thought I'd kind of give you guys the rundown on, on that. Um, again, there's been no time frame on that Codex project, but I know they're working on it. But in terms of that YAS network, that should be starting up here probably in the next few weeks. I would say at most three to four weeks tops for um, probably an update, but we'll have to see how things progress. Um, if you like this video, consider hitting the like button and consider subscribing to this channel. I think I'm going to leave it there for today. Um, as I mentioned, I was trying to uh, get outside today. You can see it's pretty dark outside. It's actually early in the morning. And for one reason or another, people here in Arizona on New Year's Eve for a gym, they just closed. It's just so random. It's like, I don't think that would happen in LA, but um, here for some reason, they got like random days that just closed. Like I didn't know New Year's Eve was, I know we're on New Year's Eve, but I thought like in the morning, it's not necessarily a holiday, so it's just a little weird. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think about that. That's just like just weird ass rules here, um, among other things. So, anyways, guys, I uh, catch you guys later. Hopefully, I can do another video um, in a few days. I uh, hurt my back uh, a few like a week ago, and that took me out for a while, but I'm back. So hopefully I can make a video, give you guys an outlook on the next year. Next year is going to be really, I think, uh, eye-opening for a lot of non-crypto holders. Uh, beginning their interest in the crypto space, I think voice is going to really propel um, that narrative. But uh, I'll catch you guys later and elaborate on that uh, on the next video. So until next time, this is Phoenix signing off. Peace.